drop by. I, I've been playing with Julia recently. I guess I started, so I, I had uh, I'd written a routine for something, uh, for uh, uh, error, evaluating error functions of complex arguments recently, and, and I was adding it to, uh, I added it to GNU Octave, to SciPy, to MATLAB, I added a MATLAB plugin, uh, a, um, uh, a SciLab, uh, I added a SciLab, and then for fun I thought, oh, I'll, I heard about Alan's Julia thing, so I'll add it to mm -hmm. Julia as well. Like, like, it's by far the easiest to plug in its own code into Julia. Uh, so that's, that was a point in his favor. And then I started playing around with it. So as, as Alan says, I wrote uh, a, a pretty well-known uh, fast Fourier transform library called FTW, which is used, for example, MATLAB's FFT function uses my code. Um, and Octave and most of the other free packages also use FFTW these days. And Julie was using FFTW, uh, but uh, 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 their interface kind of sucked. <laughs> so I, 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 I would, you know, so, 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 you know, I could actually hack on it. And I would actually write a proper interface uh, that didn't it, it didn't sacrifice an order of magnitude. Well, maybe not an order of magnitude, but a factor for performance for, uh, for for the transforms. Uh, so just expose some of the low-level uh, FW cool. interface. So because the, the main thing with FW is uh, well, one of the things that does to get high performance is it allows you to say, well, I really I want to do a whole bunch of transforms of size 10,000. Uh, so spend a little time trying different algorithms uh, for that size and pick the fastest one. And then once you have that, then we use it for, for, for all subsequent transforms of that size. So in a MATLAB, and most of the other things don't provide any interface in that functionality. They just use a quick heuristic algorithm. They, they quickly come up, they, they ask FTW just pick a heuristically what, what's a reasonable algorithm. Uh, or based on, based on whatever the, the machines they think most of the customers might maybe have. Yeah, is that even that, you know, <laughs> the, the, the heuristics, uh, it's hard to come up with, with really good heuristics, to be frank. So the heuristic algorithms, we come up with it fast, quickly, but you know, it's, it's, it might be tw twice as slow as, uh, as the optimal algorithm, or three times as slow. And uh, you know, there are a lot of circumstances where you don't care about that. You know, with the difference between you know, 100 microseconds and 300 microseconds might not matter to you. But if you're doing a million of them, then it, it matters. So you know, so yes, yeah, so I, I I rewrote the Julie FW interface so that you could access uh, in place FFTs, out of place FFTs, and you can say instead of saying FFT this array of this size, you can say uh, pre-plan an FFT of this size, and, and then hand you back a function, and then that function will just compute just compute FFTs of that size, and then and, but it'll do it quickly, and then I also added. It, it, Interfaces for all the discrete cosine and sine transforms in FW, which is also most of the other things don't have interfaces to. Um, so, you can, so you can say, I have a three dimensional array, I want to do a discrete cosine transform of type 2 along this direction, a discrete sine transform of type 1 along this direction, and a discrete cosine transform of type 4 along that, that direction. And you might really want to do that in your applications because. The main, one of the main applications of using mixing discrete cosine and sine. Can we, can we show that off, or do we have to load it? I, uh, it should work. Can you? You want? Again? You want to? It, if, sorry to put you on the spot, but actually, sure, I think it'd be sure. kind of cool to, yeah, to actually. So is I'm, everybody okay with that? This was. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, <laughs> so for example, to do, you know, if we say X is, uh, you know, uh, 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 may make it a random uh, array of uh, a random complex array, right? Yeah. And then, so you would say, you know, y equals f of t, x is the normal. That's the sort of MATLAB-like syntax. Um, and you can also say, f of t bang of x. That'll do it in place. Uh, it's not quite MATLAB. It's, it's sort of the scheme, uh, the scheme heritage showing through that that the, the convention is that functions with a with a bang with an, ex, ex, with a bang, with an exclamation mark operate in place. So that'll so certainly use less memory. Well, it's what? not going to scroll. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, so yeah, it prints out a subset, um, but it's not. That's not like the answers are particularly right. interesting. But, but the, the main point, is, <laughs> the main, the main, the main point of in place is the memory. Not, it's not a performance thing, right? Or well, yes and no. So the other, actually, it helps the performance as well in the sense that it allows you, you to do a transform without allocate, without doing any memory allocation, right? So you know, and, and, and allocating memory involves the garbage collector and so forth, and that might be slow. And if if uh, 
if Julie ever gets multi-threaded, <coughs> uh, uh, um, support, then, let's not go you know, there right now. Th then you know the garbage collector might be single-threaded for a while, so then then you might want to avoid a, a lock to, to an operating place. So yeah, and then if you just want to say if you just say p equals uh, plan f of t bang x for example, then it just pre-plans one of size x. By default, it uses the quick heuristic uh, estimate, but at least, that, at least this way, if I say p, now, now if I say p of x, it computes the f, the, uh, the f of t of x. It just returns a function. Um, and it, cause it, if you, even this way is already f is, it should already be faster because it avoids, uh, it reuses the trigonometric tables. Otherwise, every time you call an f of t, it has to build up a, t a, a trig table. And, uh, and then you can give it additional options uh, so I think you have to give it which dimension you want to transform along, and then like F to W uh, uh, measure, which actually tries, oops, F to W dot measure, which actually tries a whole bunch of different algorithms and picks the fastest one, and that, that, that should be faster. I'm not sure, let's, we can try it, let's see. So if we do P, E, this is the default. Okay, um, although, yeah, I, 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 let me redo it, because the thing is if I, um, oh sorry, I think I, I, I added, there's an interface for FW dot, I think this works. Okay, good. Yeah, because otherwise, once I plan how to do a, a transform of size 10,000, it will remember that. And so then if I say to do the estimate plan, it'll still use the fast one. So I have to do them in the right order. So. Yeah, so dot estimate, right? Yeah, uh, dot estimate. Well, he's typing. How many of you do use FFTs or probably will use FFTs in your own work? Okay. Oh, my gosh. Just like a very large number. Okay. So, yeah. So I, I'm not sure how much. So the, the only one caveat is right now these are anonymous functions, and anonymous functions in, in Julia are not jitted properly. So there's about well, a fifth. That's a complex question. It's some, it depends on, okay. depends on various things. Anyway, but there seems to be about a 50 microsecond penalty to calling, to calling an anonymous function uh, uh, for f of t's compared to something else. So, so that for small transforms, that, that overwhelms the advantage of, of the planning. I read, I read, I read your issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so, so but uh, that, that may affect whether this one is faster than the others. I, I don't know if this transformer size is big enough. Uh, yeah, so this is, let me do it a couple times. Probably, okay, okay, so the... There's a lot of variability, as unfortunately, with all timing. So about 30 something microseconds, and then the measured plan is about you know, 26. So it's, it's definitely faster. And did you want to show a sign and cosine? That's when I. Oh, sure, that, sure. That was so somehow that when the let's, when you mentioned that that was my thought of like, let's put you to the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> that's three, four, five. Uh, okay. So you can say you know DCT of X is just a type two discrete cosine transform along all the directions. Um, but you can also say uh, um, R X, and you can say let's see, uh, that's a type one discrete cosine transform uh, along the first direction. Uh, all these things are defined on the FW website. What are real? This means real even DFT. So it's a, a discrete Fourier transform of real even data, which is a discrete cosine transform. And the numbers there indicate whether the inputs or outputs are shifted by half, half a a a a, 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 a pixel. Which is, is is there a point that there's too many combinations to just like have it, you know, a DCT or something? Or well, yeah, you, know, you really want this. So there's there's eight types of DCT and eight types of DST. Right. Of those eight, really, the only four are important. Um, but you, and you definitely need uh, s several of them because because what happens is you, you have a, a, um, a discrete cosine transform is a is, is a Fourier transform of real data that's that, that's even about the left edge. But you still have a choice of whether it's even about or odd about the right edge. So basically, already you get four types: is it even or odd around the left edge, even or odd around the light, right edge? So that's and, and that they, they get that gives you four types of discrete cosine and, and sine transforms. And then you have the question of whether it's even or odd around around like uh, around one of the numbers or around the, the point halfway in between the two numbers. So basically, these, so these are useful for, for imposing different types of boundary conditions in PDEs, and and, and where exactly you, you impose the boundary is important for a lot of things. So, okay. yeah. So this is a RO DFT. Uh, yeah. So these are different types of discre discrete. So this is two types of discrete uh, uh, cosine transform on uh, the first two directions, and, and a, discrete, a type of discrete sine transform along the third direction, and that should 
that's well, yeah. It, it gives something, but uh, it, right. it's, it's not particularly interesting to look at because uh, well, it just transforms of random numbers. And you can also do uh, 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 um, with all of these things. You can do, for example, a DCT of x. Say you want to do it along the first and the third directions only, and not along the second directions. It'll transform along a subset, uh, arbitrary subset of the directions. So. Uh, MATLAB by default, MATLAB is kind of, uh, so if you say DCT of X in MATLAB, it only it transforms along the first direction. If you want a 3D DCT, you have to say DCT3, which doesn't, uh, it doesn't bother to define. So DCT just does the multidimensional by default. If you want to do what MATLAB does, you say DCT X1, and, you know, but you can also do DCT X2 or DCT X2 and, th and 3 to do along the second and third dimensions or whatever subset you want. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So, you want to ask a question, question. of Steve? Oh, yeah, question. Yeah. The um, NLOPT. NLOPT. Yeah. yeah, so I was thinking of adding <laughs> a, a, an interface for NLOPT as well. So NLOPT is a, 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 a little library that I wrote um, uh, for nonlinear optimization. It's just basically wrapper is around a whole bunch of different algorithms. It's like you know, six different global optimization algorithms and a dozen different local optimization algorithms with and without derivatives. And it has, it's written in C, and it, but it has a C++ interface, a Python interface, an R interface, a, an Octave interface, and so forth. And so obviously I should add a Julie interface. I, I, I was, uh, 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 you know, and the only, <clears throat> the, the only trick there is, is uh, uh, um, it's a C interface that requires callbacks. So basically, because you, you provide a function that you want to optimize, and you pass it to an aloft, and then it calls your function. And uh, so right now, I guess recently was, there was added some support to make it easy to mm -hmm. pass callbacks to um, uh, to, to, Julia to, 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 to C fun Julia functions as callbacks to C functions. Uh, they're still not quite as nice yeah. as I would like. I mean, you'd, you'd like to be able to pass a closure with an environment. Yeah, it's about, but, it's about half done. Yeah, yeah. So it's, we, we've, dis we've discussed it. Bas basically what happens is, you know, if, if you want something that's, that's re-entrant, right, for example, if you want to optimize a function that itself optimizes something or something like that, um, then you need to pass it, it, pass it in a full closure, right? Uh, uh, in C, the way you do that is you pass in a function and you pass a void pointer that has a pointer to whatever data structure it needs, right? And so, the, of course, the, NLOP uses that style, so basically what you do for an interface for Julia, for Python, or whatever, is you, is you use that void pointer to pass in the, you, know, you, 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 you call it with a function that's, that's your wrapper function, and you use the void pointer to pass in the environment or whatever it needs, you know, the closure information, that it, whatever it needs to, 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 uh, to call itself. So that, that isn't quite there in Julia uh, yet, but uh, once that's added, it should be really trivial to add in an unlocked interface. Any other questions? Any questions as long as Steve's here for the moment? You're welcome to hang around or yeah, pop in and out as you, as you wish.